You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another short but interesting episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. You know, you have a lot of options. And so every time you choose us, it means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. When was the last time uh, you took flight? When was the last time you practiced those smooth banking turns and got some photos just for fun? So we've got an interesting show today regarding NOAA restrictions. Uh, it's actually quite interesting. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. So today's show is brought to you by our brand new Props Public Safety Platform. What does Props stand for? Professional Reliable Operators Practicing Safety. And Drone U, through the Props program, is the only flight school that offers an educational platform to support multiple pilots across teams or drone programs. So if you want to create those systems, those methodologies of operation, systems of communication and if you want to discern whether your pilots are truly ready they're proficient versus current you're going to want to check out the props program and the public safety program after years of building it is one of the most comprehensive training programs that we have ever put together it covers hazmat usage wildland fires mapping those it covers hot spot detection overwatch and so much more you can even learn for free whether going the COA route or part 107 is right for you. And now we have even have a new in-person training program called Flight Mastery Public Safety, where we've added some new exercises specific to public safety. You're gonna wanna check that out. Just go to propsflightschool.com and click on the public safety tab. And you can book a demo to take a look behind the curtain and check out if this is right for you. That's, uh, but that's pretty much it. I think you'll find There's so much value in the program. It's really ridiculous. So check it out. Let's hit that question, Rob. Hey, guys, this is Keith Stansel with uh, Nashville Drone Co. out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, First of all, thanks for all the the useful information you guys provide on the podcast. And uh, that uh, at Drone U, just uh, so grateful for that. It's helped me tremendously. My question is, I uh, recently took a trip out to the West Coast. I was hoping to get some um, some incredible drone footage, you know, the Pacific Coast. I was in the area from uh, Monterey down to Big Sur, Bigsby Bridge, um, that area. So um, as I was checking the airspace and the uh, restrictions and whatnot in the area, I ran across a restriction that the NOAA has in place that um, no motorized aircraft in the protected areas can fly below a thousand feet. Um, my question is, and it's a lot of the area is covered, and that's to protect the uh, the wildlife, the marine life. Uh, my question is, do they have the ability to restrict that? Uh, if the FAA says uh, uh, says it's good airspace, is it okay to fly there? I did find. Some alternative methods. I uh, I didn't fly over the ocean, but uh, uh, flew you know inland a bit to try to get some of the footage. But um, it sure cramped my style trying to get uh, the epic footage. Anyway, would appreciate uh, you guys' input on that. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. Boy, that's a uh, disappointment, right? When you go pretty much cross country and uh, I don't know, have these great plans of getting some great footage, epic footage. Choose your word. Love it. And then find out there's uh, some federal agency that's uh, not wanting you to do that. Um, so what do we what do we recommend, Paul? What would you do? What do well, you think? I we think did do a little research on this. We did do a little research. Um, NOAA does have a little section on their website regarding this. And actually, it's very interesting because even in their FAQs, would you go back to that? Even in their FAQs, they mentioned um, that the FAA stated it does not view NOAA's minimum alt- altitude disturbance thresholds as airspace regulations, uh, nor as an infringement on the FAA's uh, stated authority to regulate airspace. So it seems like they are acknowledging that it's not technically an airspace regulation, but rather a violation of federal wildlife disturbance prohibitions. 
So my question would be, so does just the act of flying dictate a violation of wildlife disturbance or would they have to prove that you actually disturbed wildlife? Now, I'm saying this under the premise and assumption that you are not flying 50 feet, 80 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet over any type of wildlife that they're trying to uh, protect, right? I'm saying that you, you're flying re uh, reasonably and responsibly, right? That's the assumption. So I would say, I think my first thing would be, you know, they notice that they have permits on there and their exempt uses on there as well. Uh, I think he has two ways of going about this. Um, he has the, um, you know, ask for forgiveness, not permission kind of strategy, or the second strategy of going to NOAA and applying for a permit to see if he acquires it. Um, he could be very specific about, you know, his intended goals, where he wants to fly, f fly from. Mm -hmm. um, et cetera, because we know that NOAA uses drones in, in various methodologies in this area for various things. They even mention exemptions that they give as well. Mm -hmm. So all of that to be said, I mean, I think that it's clear that it, you know, they're not trying to regulate the airspace, even though they kind of are. And they even say that it's not a airspace regulation per se. So you would not be in any violation of any airspace regulation, but they state that you could be in violation of a wild wildlife disturbance prohibition. Now, I, again, there are ways that you can go about it. Um, I would want to know, you know, what is actually a violation? Because if you can't regulate the airspace, then what is the actual violation? You know, if someone takes a photo of you flying 30 feet over a walrus or something, okay, that makes sense. But if they can't hear or see you at 300 feet taking great uh, panos on the beach, I don't know. I mean, this yeah. is one of those things where it's like one government agency is trying to do the job of another government agency. And I understand the overlap a little bit. Sure. But again, I think they could be more specific as to what a violation would entail. So, Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's been they've been pretty clear in terms of motorized aircraft below a thousand foot is a no, no. Kind of plain and simple, mm -hmm. period, end of story. However, I believe, and I don't know this, I haven't confirmed, but I think these rules were in place well before drones became much of anything, right? Yeah. But we also know that um, like RC planes have been around for a long time, so I could see them thinking about those in this case. But a couple of things come to mind, Paul. One is um, we should care about the wildlife, right? And making Agreed. sure that they're okay. And I, I know you agree with that. Um, but that is something that um, we should be sensitive. Definitely not saying that Keith is not sensitive to that, just making sure that that is clear. But then number two is, and you sort of alluded to this, I think, Keith, you've got to kind of figure out, well, what kind of risk am I willing to take? Um, what does it mean to violate a disturbance prohibition that is a federal disturbance or federal prohibition. What are the ramifications of doing so? And if you can somehow justify in your mind that what's the big deal? I don't think I'm actually hurting anything, which of course, if everybody did that, that'd be the problem. Um, so definitely not suggesting that just kind of thinking this through, right. And kind of talking it through, then you've got to decide what am I willing to put up with? What is the risk that I'm willing to take? Meaning what if somebody does come out there and catch you a park ranger or whatever, whoever they use to, to make sure people aren't doing this. Um, are you willing to fight it? Are you willing to get a thousand dollar fine and say, yeah, but I got epic footage. What are you willing to do and put up with? I, for one would probably go somewhere else. Yeah. Right. You know, in this day and age, do you really want to deal with the fight is the, re that's the true question. Yeah. You are, you going to put up the money? Uh, yeah, they're going to have to prove that you did something. If so, how? And for me, I'm just like, you know what, in today's day and age with the political BS that is just everywhere, it's like, mm, probably not worth the fight in my humble opinion. No, I agree with you. And you know, they, they've covered their bases in terms of a lot the primary question when something like this comes up is, isn't it FAA airspace and therefore they're not allowed to tell us that I can't fly? Well, yeah, that's sort of the old, it's become an old argument and they've addressed it in their FAQs. <laughs> so they're sort of ahead of the game in that regard. So um, there's a bit of sophistication to what they're trying to do here. And uh, yeah, I, 
I don't know, Keith, I probably would find another cool place to get epic footage. That's how I see it. Well, on that note, I think that'll do it for us today. Um, thank you again for your questions. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. But that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.